Welcome back to Getting to Know the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. Today we are here at the Shrine of Our Lady Chestahova, and we are joined by Father Timothy, who is a priest of the Order of St. Paul the First Hermit. Father, thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, and it's great to be here with you, Dan, and it's, it's great to, uh, to be able to talk to you and to the seminarians as well. Awesome, yeah. So to start us off, I think uh, we should get to know you and your order a little bit. So can you tell us a little bit about who the Pauline Fathers are and how they were founded and, and what is your mission and charism exactly? Okay, so I will probably have to give you the short version uh, because we could spend the whole interview of just about that because the history of our order is a little bit complicated. So, uh, but to just kind of to give you a little bit of a summary. So our community um, has been founded in 13th century in, in Hungary, in Europe. So uh, we are over 800 years old uh, as a community. And so um, the order was created by Blessed Eusebius, who was a priest in Hungary, but he, um, he wanted something more in his priesthood. And so um, he would join the hermits um, because he wanted to imitate their life. There was a, a very big uh, hermitage movement uh, in Europe during that time, and many um, pe people who were seeking uh, a more deep spiritual life, they would go into the woods or, or they would just try to find solitude in prayer. And so Blessed Eusebius, he, uh, he became hermit himself as well, but as a priest. Uh, and he also uh, gathered all the hermits who were dispersed into one community. He had this vision um, of little flames giving light and heat, but being very scattered. And so he had this vision of all the little flames coming into one. And so he was given an explanation through the Holy Spirit um, to gather all the hermits who were those little flames scattered all over the woods um, to become one community, to become one light for the church um, to uh, evangelize and to be the sign of, of the kingdom of heaven uh, here on earth. And so that's how the co community started. And so the community started as, as, uh, as an, an order of hermits, and they chose St. Paul the first hermit, um, who was a saint in Egypt in the first centuries, uh, considered to be the first hermit. Uh, they chose him as a patron saint, but um, later on, God showed us uh, that he is calling us as a community uh, to minister to people. So the more our fathers would close themselves out, the more we would like separate uh, and isolate, the more the people would come and seek advice, seek the sacraments, and then the church would give us Marian shrines. So uh, uh, our charism is, is semi-contemplative. Uh, the goal for us is to find this relationship just like the hermits, to be alone with God, but to share that with others through apostolic work. So it's kind of combining this contemplative and active life, um, especially um, through the shrines that, that the church has given us, uh, such as the shrine of Our Lady of Częstochowa, and such as many shrines that we run all over the world, that the pilgrims come to us uh, when we can give them what we have in our, what we experience in our relationship with the Lord. So. It's kind of a long kind of a way of getting there, but we can right. see that this is how God has led our co community in this way. Yeah, that, that's very powerful um, to kind of be brought from uh, the contemplative life into a life of service, but also still holding on to that charism of contemplation. Um, so what drew you personally to, to the Pauline Fathers? So probably on a, on a rational level, it was the combination of apostolic and contemplative life, but I think it's just, as I was discerning when I was in, in, in high school, I started thinking about priesthood, and I, I, and I have been discerning, and uh, I, I would attend my diocese in Connecticut, uh, their vocation meetings and their vocation office, uh, and I would also visit different religious communities, but then I, I saw how weird it, it was, like I was discerning diocesan priesthood, and like, uh, pastoral and very active communities such as the Franciscan CFRs and but then on the other hand I would be attracted to like Benedictines and like I would be fascinated by Cartusians and like so like this is kind of weird like two 
two um, extremes here. Yeah. And so, um, but then I also started coming here as a teenager, and there was something um, that I felt here that the Blessed Mother was inviting me to. And so, this is how I was kind of attracted to this way of life. It's kind of even difficult to explain. It's like explaining why did, did, did you fall in love with this person, right? So it's kind of hard to explain. Of course, later on, it made sense to me that, yeah, because I was looking at all those different types of life that I chose a semi-contemplative life in this particular order. But I think on a deep level, it's, it's really a mystery why the Lord has brought me here. Right. That's, that's, yeah, that's awesome. Um, so a major part of your order is the shrine um, of Our Lady Czesnochowa in Poland, in Jasna Gora, um, where the icon is located. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about Jasna Gora and the history of the icon there? Sure. So we don't know, like, a lot about the origins of the icon. There is a legend um, that, uh, that tells us that the icon of the Blessed Mother has been um, painted by Saint Luke, and and then um, it, it, like the when we uh, according to that legend, the icon was in Constantinople, then it was in 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 Russia, and then um, one of the Polish uh, princes, um, one of, uh, he he went to he he was waging a war on, on, on like he, he was making some kind of a conquest there, and one of the war spoils that he got was this image. And so he took, took it back to his kingdom, uh, which is in Częstochowa. Right. And so he invited our fathers from Hungary to come and to create a Marian shrine. So this was uh, the end of 14th century, 1382. That's the foundation of the shrine of Jasnagura. And quickly, you know, uh, there were many miracles happening in that place and over the centuries eventually uh, the Blessed Mother of Our Lady of Częstochowa she became the symbol for for all the Poles and um, she has intervened in many situations and then she was de declared the Queen of Poland and so on so there have been so many different miracles associated with the image and with the shrine in, of Jasnagura. every king would go for a battle somewhere even um, the famous uh, King John Sobieski who went for the Battle of Vienna to protect the Europe uh, against the Muslim invasion, he would stop at Yasnagura, pray, and then go for the battle. And then after he, he won the battle, he came back to thank the Blessed Mother, and he brought a lot of the war spoils which we have in our museum in, in Częstochowa. So that's just to show the importance of the shrine for the Polish nation. Wow. Okay. So it's it's kind of like a uh, a, a centerpiece for your for your culture, um, and it's yeah. very it seems very awesome that it can blend both um, your religious heritage and also your even I guess your secular heritage like your your armies and stuff. Yeah. It's it's it, it's sort of like I, I mean every comparison is is not sufficient, but it's like it's just like Guadalupe is for the Mexicans and how it's associated with their history, of course. And on many different levels, right? But Częstochowa is so much associated with the Polish heritage, and with uh, Polish history and identity. Yeah, for sure. Um, so one of our favorite modern saints, John Paul II, was was Polish, and I think a lot of people, when they think of of Catholicism in Poland, think of John Paul II. So, did he impact your order in any way? Yeah. So um, as a as a teenager, I believe, or, 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 or as a young person, he would make pilgrimages to the shrine. So, um, so he had a deep devotion to the Blessed Mother. And then as a pope, he, um, every time he came to Poland, I'm not sure if it was seven or nine times, that as a pope he would come to Poland, he would always visit Częstochowa. Like that had to be on, on his list. Right. Um, that was always the main part of his pilgrimage, to visit Our Lady of Częstochowa. Um, but he did actually have an impact on our community. He had a speech uh, to our fathers uh, in the 80s, when I believe, when he came to Częstochowa, and um, he was giving a homily to our fathers, and he told us that, um, that Yasnagura is our charism, that, you know, what's happening here in this shrine in Poland, in Częstochowa, 
that's affecting our order. That is, in fact, a sign of time that God gave us. And so um, there's a gospel passage associated with the shrine, with, with the icon of Our Lady of um, Częstochowa, which is the wedding in Cana. And so John Paul II was saying that, you know, that that Yasna Gura and every Marian shrine that, that we bring the, uh, uh, the image of Our Lady of Częstochowa with us is kind of like that um, that um, wedding in Cana. And so we as Pauline fathers are called to be the servants. So we are listening to what Mary says, do whatever my son tells you. And then we're witnessing all those miracles, changing of uh, of water uh, into wine, so changing all the sadness and all the prayer intentions into uh, wine, joy, and love that we experience. So he kind of showed us that, you know, um, Yasnagur is not just one of the many shrines that, that, that we have, but it affects our charism that, you know, it's... Um, and also he would point out the role of confession at Yasnagura, and so how important it is through the shrine f uh, for our community. So he had a tremendous effect, his devotion, and it just really influenced us more and more. That's awesome.